Hey guys, today Apple released an update to Final Cut Pro that includes the usual stability enhancements, but they included a little surprise that many of us have been asking for quite some time. Let's check it out. Final Cut Pro 10.5.3 now includes better ways to search and organize clips in the browser. Clicking on the caret icon next to the magnifying glass reveals three new text-based search options. You can now search for notes, clip and project names, and markers. By default, all text is selected, meaning that any text-based search you invoke will encompass all three. For example, let's say that I wanted to search for everything in my event with the word take in it. The search returns a single clip with a note that includes that word, plus two more clips that use that word in the marker name. Click the X to clear the search. But you can also narrow your search to just one text-based item. I'll choose Names, then enter the word Creek. All projects and clips that contain that word are returned by the search. Any notes or markers that use that word are excluded. I'll clear the search. And now the money shot. Right-clicking on any column header and choosing Edit Available Columns exposes a window giving you the ability to edit, create, duplicate, and save your column sets. For those of you who've been editing with Final Cut Pro 10 since the beginning, this has been a long overdue feature. In the upper left, the default column set is displayed. Scrolling through the properties reveals all the available properties that can be displayed in the column list. Items that appear with a check mark are currently exposed in the list. To add or remove an item, click the box. A window appears letting you know that the default set cannot be modified and that you'll need to make a copy. Give your set a name and click OK. Go through the list, checking the items you want and unchecking the items you don't want. If, however, you want to view a list defined by a particular category of related properties, choose an option from this pop-up. Choosing video properties, for example, will only display video-related properties, and choosing audio properties will only display audio-related properties, and so on. Using this menu, you can uncheck all the options or check them all. For my way of working, I prefer to start with a completely clean layout that is not based on a duplicate set. Click the gear icon and choose Delete Column Set. To add a fresh layout, choose New Column Set. I'll name this RT Set and press Return. From the pop-up, I'll choose Studio Properties and place a check next to Video Frame Rate, Raw to Log Conversion, Notes, Media Duration, and Frame Size. Then I'll select Video Properties and enable Source Size, Source Format, and Original Name, and click OK. In the browser list view, only my selected column properties are displayed. As I look this over, I realize that I forgot to add a codec column. I'll return to the Column Set Editor and in the search field, enter Codec to bring it up. Place a check next to it and click OK. The codec column now appears in the list. Next, I'll arrange the columns to prioritize them when looking left or right. To edit the current set, right-click on any column header. The list of currently visible properties appears at the bottom of the menu, and items can be disabled and enabled here. You can also save the currently active set under a different name. And you can locate the layout file in the Finder and make it available to other editing workstations. There's also some new media sorting options. I'll call up the Filter HUD and choose Media Representation. You can now filter by original, optimized, and proxy media. I'll choose proxy, and any clips that have proxy representations will be returned by the search. I'll set this to original media, and using this pop-up, I can now filter any missing or offline media in my library. I'm really happy they added this option because I find it time-consuming trying to locate offline media across multiple events. Finally, there's a new marker rule that will locate any clips that you've added markers to, and they can be further filtered by marker type using this menu. So what do you think of the new features? Leave your comments below. In the next video, we'll take a look at the new features in Compressor.